so my name is Sean Murphy. I'm a senior researcher in the ICC lab in ZAV, uh, which um, maybe some of you guys know here. I think we've been involved in organizing uh, the event here. Uh, one of my colleagues, Antonio, is doing a lot of work on it. Um, and so uh, Thomas uh, was scheduled to give a talk today, but he had uh, he was asked if he would give a talk in Bali, and he somehow managed to uh, prioritize uh, that over, over Bern. <laughs> uh, so um, uh, the, schedule, the title of the talk, I think, is, is modified a little bit. Um, uh, just, um, uh, but it's basically uh, going to focus on these uh, so-called uh, future internet technologies, uh, which are um, a set of technologies which we've been working on for quite a few years, and Thomas in particular has done a lot of work on, um, in the context of, of European uh, research uh, projects, and essentially uh, funded by um, a lot of money from Europe, but with a lot of buy-in from uh, large uh, companies around Europe. Uh, Telefonica is a big player in it. Uh, SAP are, are heavily involved in it uh, also. Uh, some of the telecoms guys, Telecom Italia, are pretty big in there. Um, and uh, other, other large companies and universities around Europe. So uh, it all falls under this uh, so-called future internet uh, program. So Europe is basically painting a picture of what it sees as the, as the future internet and it's somehow being realized through uh, projects that it funds, and these projects have come up with these three um, uh, concepts, um, uh, which have some technology behind them, but uh, they are uh, uh, basic uh, uh, ideas of FIWARE, FILAB, and FIOPS, and I'm just gonna talk a little bit about uh, what these are, and then uh, try to link them to, uh, to Switzerland uh, a little bit further down. Uh, so, I won't dwell on this uh, too much. Uh, this is the uh, larger level program which relates to how essentially Brussels manages its money. Um, it's a so-called public-private partnership, which means that there's public money and there's private money. Public money is obviously uh, the pot of money in Brussels, and then the private money is the contributions from uh, uh, essentially the large companies uh, and SMEs that, that participate, but mostly the large companies. Um, and so the idea is to try and agree on a, on a set of base technologies on which future internet applications can be built on, and then try and apply that in different, uh, in different verticals. So the different verticals are you know, transport, mobility, and logistics, tourism, e-government, uh, smart uh, grid, uh, health, and one that I'll talk about a bit uh, further down, which is increasingly important in this world, is, is, is smart city. Um, so uh, the goal is to, to uh, agree on these set of technologies, and the approach then is to define the technologies under this brand FIWARE. So these are uh, a set of uh, open source components um, which um, do a lot of uh, quite standard things that you want to do in, in, in future applications. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but that's uh, stuff that essentially you can see on GitHub. Then FileLab is uh, somewhere where you can, you can log in and start to experiment with and, and play with these uh, technologies, and you can set up an account on, on, on FileLab and, uh, and start setting them up. And the idea is that FileLab is supposed to be um, uh, a meeting point uh, where um, uh, people can uh, uh, play with technologies and uh, come up with new ideas uh, for them, so targeted at developers and uh, entrepreneurs. And then FIOPS is a, is a set of tools then for, for making deployment of these, uh, of these FIWARE components uh, easier. Uh, so um, there's um, a lot of money has been, uh, has been put into this. Uh, I think 600 million euros is the total pot. Um, promoted by Europe, but uh, there are other uh, uh, participants from other countries uh, beginning to get involved. So there's uh, guys from Mexico in particular I've seen are uh, interested in, uh, in deploying this technology locally and uh, um, uh, seeing what it can do in their context. So FIWARE and FILAB. Uh, FIWARE is a, is a technology, and uh, FILAB is this uh, uh, somehow open innovation ecosystem. Um, FIWARE is basically built on top of OpenStack, and that's why it somehow relates to uh, uh, the focus of the discussions today. 
Um, it has uh, components which uh, target uh, big data, making it easier to deploy uh, essentially uh, Hadoop. Um, it has uh, components uh, which uh, address security. Uh, it has components which um, address uh, Internet of Things integration, so it makes it easier to uh, pull in data from uh, small devices. Uh, and then manage that data and make it accessible to uh, different applications which are uh, which are working on the on the platform. Um, uh, so it, it's a rich library of uh, these are so-called generic enablers. These are the basic building blocks on which people should build their applications and tool support. Uh, so targeting developers' needs. Uh, so what kind of components uh, uh, sit in it? Uh, the, the needs are there on the, uh, the left-hand side. So rich uh, web-based user experience, connecting apps to the physical world, all of these things I think are uh, quite standard uh, problems that uh, you guys would be familiar with. And then the uh, approaches uh, that are uh, agreed on within the future internet world um, are uh, specific uh, uh, technologies um, uh, which uh, um, support uh, in, uh, on the top there. There's uh, uh, tools uh, for uh, wireframing mobile apps uh, and make it easy to, to build uh, mobile applications. Uh, there's tools for uh, plugging in uh, machine to machine uh, uh, systems, uh, data gathering, and a lot of that would come from the machine to machine stuff. Um, there's a business and delivery framework there, so there's a, um, uh, a tool for um, enabling you to uh, charge people uh, for use of, of services uh, or applications, and there's security, and uh, there's a, a full suite uh, of, of, of base technologies which should enable people to develop uh, uh, any <coughs> application they can envisage. Uh, the, uh, set of so-called generic enablers uh, which have been uh, defined are uh, listed in a catalog, so catalog.fireware.org, so if you're interested in seeing uh, the, the technologies that underpin uh, this stuff, you can go there uh, and uh, have a look. There's uh, an example of the, um, the big data analysis one, the Cosmos uh, tool, which, is, uh, which makes it easier to deploy, uh, deploy Hadoop. Uh, so that's you know, in a nutshell, what the uh, FIWARE uh, system uh, is. Um, we in ZHW are doing a bit of work on developing uh, some, uh, some middleware uh, components inside FIWARE. It's a large project that we don't have uh, full visibility of, uh, of all the rest of the, of the components that are being developed. Um, but uh, we're, we're doing our bit in, 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 that, in that part of the project. Uh, FILAB then is uh, actually taking the technologies that have been developed in FIWARE and uh, uh, deploying them so that people can, uh, can use them. Um, so uh, who, would, who would use them? Um, uh, entrepreneurs are uh, somehow um, a, a main uh, focus um, of, uh, uh, of this work. There's a, a significant amount of money is uh, being made available to uh, entrepreneurs um, to use these uh, technologies. So Europe is uh, quite uh, proactive in, 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 in trying to get people to use these technologies and, and, and see what they can, uh, they can do with them. Um, and uh, yeah, 100 million euros will be made available over the next um, approximately year or so in tranches of, I think, uh, something like 100,000 uh, euros has been, uh, has been talked about. So if people are interested in uh, using these technologies to build applications and services, there's uh, financial supports available there. Um, so entrepreneurs are, are one of the main uh, targets of these uh, technologies. Um, uh, but they also uh, are bringing in uh, data sources uh, so that people could build applications on top of, of data. And that uh, relates to the smart city uh, stuff that I, was, I mentioned uh, briefly. So the cities are are, are uh, starting to bring in uh, to bring in data to run on this uh, on this platform, um, and it's kind of a, a confluence of, of people who want to build applications, uh, people who have data which can drive some of these applications, uh, users, uh, customers of the data or of the applications, and then the uh, the fireware uh, community uh, at the bottom who provides the, the technology. So that's what Filab is uh, is trying to be. It's still. In the very early stages of, of, of FileLab, I think uh, you can log in. I think I have the URL at the bottom. 
uh, at uh, lab.fiware.org, I think is the, is the URL, and you can start experimenting with this. Um, but the nodes uh, that are underpinning this um, uh, are uh, just uh, only reaching a stage where, where they're uh, reasonably reliable and people can start, uh, start using them. So it hasn't really been, um, uh, uh, been uh, very extensively, uh, extensively used as yet. Uh, so, you know, that's somehow the concept of what it is, uh, what's uh, under the hood. Well, I didn't go into uh, very much detail here. Um, it's a federation of 17 uh, nodes uh, around Europe. Uh, there were five original nodes, um, Trento, Berlin, uh, Lannion in France, and Waterford and Seville. Um, and there are 12 nodes uh, which uh, have just recently uh, joined and uh, are uh, increasing the, uh, the size of the, of the federation and offering more. Uh, uh, compute power is one thing, but some of the nodes are bringing in, uh, for example, the, uh, the guys in, in, in uh, southern France and Sophia Antipolis, I think, are, are bringing in um, uh, 4G infrastructure that could be used. Um, uh, there's uh, guys I think are bringing in uh, some uh, sensor networks which are attached to bicycles in a, in a city in Greece. So there's, uh, uh, they're trying to bring in more, more data sources and more technologies rather than just, uh, just basic uh, compute power. Uh, so we are uh, one of the nodes uh, that is, uh, is joining this uh, federation uh, and we'll be uh, going around Switzerland uh, over the next uh, year uh, telling people um, what it can do and showing people what, how they can use it. Uh, the node, the system is primarily based on OpenStack. Uh, this work started uh, uh, over a year ago and there was a decision made at that time uh, to go with OpenStack and at the time the decision was uh, to go with Grizzly, uh, upgrading it in this heterogeneous, diverse uh, context, as you can imagine, is, is quite difficult. Uh, so uh, the system is still based on uh, the Grizzly distribution of OpenStack. Um, the project has developed tools uh, to ease deployment, um, and which are based on the uh, Demarantis uh, Fuel tool, if uh, any of you guys are, are, are familiar with it. And they've added enhancements to it, uh, which are somewhat tailored uh, to this configuration where you've got these uh, different sets of nodes. Um, uh, all over Europe. Um, the nodes are connected via Géant, which uh, is the, um, uh, the network which interconnects uh, all of the um, NRENs, which are the networks which connect the academic institutions, and Géant is the European uh, network which connects all those. Um, in most cases, uh, a so-called multi-domain VPN, uh, which is some kind of multicast VPN is used to connect, uh, to connect the nodes. Uh, in Switzerland, that's not possible because uh, it's not supported by uh, Switch. Um, so we're uh, looking for uh, other solutions. Uh, at the moment, there's a single key Keystone uh, authentication service, um, but the project is looking at ways to uh, extend that to uh, uh, enable um, a different um, identity and uh, access control uh, solutions uh, to for, for people who are bringing users into into the system, um, and monitoring is something that the uh, the guys have done a reasonable amount to work on. There's uh, uh, quite a lot of, of Nagios uh, based uh, monitoring, which monitors uh, OpenStack, I think, uh, reasonably reasonably well. So that's mostly what the uh, the um, uh, what sits behind uh, the uh, uh, file lab. Uh, going back to uh, Europe again, so uh, Europe is making a strong bet on, on this uh, future internet uh, uh, suite of technologies, so Neely Kroos is talking about it. Uh, interestingly, um, really pushing the message out at uh, you know, strong developer-focused events such as Campus Party, um, where there's a lot of uh, young guys uh, hacking away with technologies and are trying to uh, promote uh, the uh, future internet technologies there. Uh, so there's, uh, um, uh, it's at the highest levels in Brussels. Uh, this this technology is is is, is quite uh, well received. Let's say, um, smart cities is an area where um, um, there's uh, uh, is one of the use cases that the uh, is being targeted. Um, 
So uh, a number of, of cities are saying that they like uh, the future internet technologies and uh, I think they're offering data feeds uh, of uh, some of their data uh, to be used in the, uh, in, the, in the future internet world. And so the idea there is that uh, entrepreneurs, application developers can come along and take uh, some of the data feeds uh, offered by the, by the cities. Um, and there's a hackathon events are being uh, run by this uh, future uh, internet, uh, the Fiber project, um, uh, and some of them are targeted specifically at, at smart cities. Uh, some people have uh, uh, developed um, applications. Uh, one of them was, a, I think, um, a car sharing, uh, sorry, car parking space uh, sharing application, uh, which somehow fitted under the smart cities realm. And there was other ones which were uh, the winners then. The other ones were uh, some kind of home integration uh, type of, uh, home automation uh, type, of, uh, type of system. So that's uh, a little bit about what the future internet uh, world is, uh, which clearly it has a very strong European emphasis. And uh, I suppose one question that comes to mind is why should anybody in Switzerland uh, care? Um, uh, so just talk a little bit about the uh, current and future, uh, future internet activities in Switzerland. Uh, there's already some uh, future internet activities taking place. There's a, a, a project which falls under this uh, future internet banner called Fi Content and, and Disney uh, in Zurich and ETH Zurich are, are participants in it. And there's a, a, another project, Fi Space, which has Kuhn and Nagel uh, participating in it. Uh, these are uh, some kind of... Um, projects uh, which are trying to um, figure out how to use these so-called generic enablers <coughs> uh, in specific verticals. So Fi Content is looking at using the uh, generic enablers in the media space, and Fi Space is looking at uh, using the generic enablers in the, in the logistics and distribution space. And then we in ZHAW uh, are uh, quite active uh, in, the, in the community. So there's, there's some activity already in this, uh, in this space uh, taking place in Switzerland, so there sh should be some noise about it here in Switzerland, and certainly we're, uh, we're going to make some noise about it. Um, the other point which probably is uh, uh, interesting is there's opportunities for uh, Swiss SMEs to obtain uh, funding um, uh, for uh, offering services or developing applications using the, the future internet uh, suite. Uh, this comes uh, under the European uh, Framework 7 uh, funds. It's, it, it's, this is money which is allocated in the previous uh, tranche of funding rather than the, the Horizon 2020 stuff, and the details will be announced uh, later this year. Uh, and then there's opportunities to build smart cities applications. So I think the, the Swiss smart city story is, is, uh, is only beginning. I think cities are, are uh, uh, still in the early stages of, 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 of figuring out uh, um, how to use ICT uh, more effectively and how to become uh, somehow smart. And so we're having conversations with the, with the smart cities world to see if the future internet technologies can uh, help address ICT aspects in, in, in smart cities. Um, uh, so that's, you know, somehow um, how the future internet stuff at a high level can, can make sense in Switzerland. Um, one thing that we've been um, uh, looking at in the, in the lab is using the fireware technologies for delivery of, of public uh, slash uh, governmental services. And you know, we have been having uh, conversations with people about this, uh, obviously with their own selfish agenda of, of promoting these uh, technologies. Uh, so somehow um, these, uh, there's, a, there's a base set of, of, of technologies, um, uh, obviously infrastructure as a service, OpenStack, uh, primarily sitting at the bottom, I don't know what cloud stack is in there. Um, uh, um, and then uh, technologies uh, for uh, data management. Um, one thing that's different uh, in the um, uh, realm of government services is the uh, uh, identity management and the standard uh, approaches which exist in the future internet world for identity management probably are not applicable. Uh, to government services, so that needs to be uh, rethought. Uh, but a lot of the other building blocks um, that uh, come out of the fireware can be used for delivery of, 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 of public services. So, uh, And then smart cities, so this is just uh, one example of how we're trying to use these uh, future internet technologies in smart cities. Uh, uh, small uh, project, which is uh, somehow a bachelor's project, so just measuring air quality, taking small devices here, 
um, uh, uh, which uh, measure air quality. We're going to put them uh, around Vintertour. Uh, we're going to pull in the data using uh, the Fiware uh, components and then mash it up with, uh, with Google Maps uh, to, uh, uh, to show uh, air quality uh, around, around the city. So uh, the specific components from uh, uh, Fiware that would be used there are the components uh, for uh, for data collection, uh, there's a, a context broker which has a publish subscribe mechanism uh, where uh, people can uh, uh, subscribe to feeds from the from the sensors and some some data analysis uh, components. And then, okay, somehow they would look like that. And there's already some uh, variants using those sensors which have been uh, uh, which have been uh, realised, uh, I think, in Italy. And so that's basically. Um, all I have to say about this uh, future internet stuff, uh, there's a few links there uh, for anybody who's interested. The Lab stuff is at lab.fiware.org. Uh, we're on Twitter. And uh, that's uh, the world of the future internet uh, is uh, coming from, from Europe. So. so anybody have any questions? It, it seems to be meant as an, as an uh, how's it say here, an, an open innovation laboratory. Yes. So naturally, naturally, uh, if I develop something uh, for a smart cities, uh, so an application or so, I'd, I'd like to see it continue. Uh, what what do you see as as a transition mechanism for something that's developed on on this? Uh, so, uh, an, an, a, a, essentially, a, a laboratory platform to something that can be uh, run into the future. run as a productive yeah, system. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a, uh, obviously a, a good, natural question. Um, the people behind it are struggling uh, uh, to find an answer to that question. Um, uh, there is money um, has been allocated uh, to sustain the platform for, uh, for about another year or so, and then there's funds after that for, um, through another project for, I think, another, another year or so. But obviously, running it off public money is not sustainable in any sense in, into, into the longer term. Uh, so uh, Telefonica is, is one um, kind of flagship that's saying it it's kind of believes in the technology. And I think it has plans to deploy it in a commercial, in a commercial context uh, for itself. So um, I think uh, the concrete answer about uh, you know, which organizations are going to deploy it commercially and, and uh, the terms of business. I think there is no answer, no, no, no specific answer to that yet. Um, it's an issue that people are aware of. There's public money on the table for the, let's say, the nearer term. And there are, I think, uh, organiza private organizations around Europe that say, uh, we think this is reasonably uh, realistic and are willing to, uh, to put it into uh, uh, commercial, uh, uh, commercial offering and, and, and that would be the way to, to, to uh, for it to sustain itself going forward, I think, so. <laughs>